This video covers part one of section 2.2, multiply quantified statements. Propositional functions can, and often do, involve more than one variable. For a propositional function with multiple variables, we can apply a quantifier to each variable. For instance, suppose p of x, y is a propositional function involving two variables, x and y. We can apply quantifiers to both variables, as in for all x, for all y, p of x, y, or for all x there exists a y, p of x, y. The result in either case will be a statement. If we have the same quantifier on both variables, then the order of the quantifiers doesn't matter. The statement for all x, for all y, p of x, y, is logically equivalent to the statement for all y, for all x, p of x, y. In symbolic form, this means the equivalence as shown. We usually read either of these statements more concisely as for all x and y, p of x, y. A similar result holds for two existential quantifiers. There exists an x, there exists a y, p of x, y, is logically equivalent to there exists a y, there exists an x, p of x, y. These statements are usually read there exist x and y such that p of x, y. For our first example, we want to rewrite the following statements in symbolic form. Our first statement is, for all real numbers x and y, x plus y equals y plus x. Well, this probably looks familiar. This is a statement of the commutative property of addition for real numbers. Start by defining the propositional function p of x, y is x plus y equals y plus x, where the domain for both x and y is the set R of real numbers. The statement then has symbolic form for all x, for all y, p of x, y. Alternatively, we can just include the propositional function in the quantified statement without using a separate notation for it. The symbolic form can then be written for all x, for all y, x plus y equals y plus x. For our next example, we have the statement for all real numbers x, y, and z, x plus y quantity plus z is equal to x plus the quantity y plus z. And this should also look familiar. This is a statement of the associative property of addition for real numbers. Define the propositional function q of x, y, z to be x plus y quantity plus z is equal to x plus the quantity y plus z where the domain for each of x, y, and z is the set R of real numbers. The statement then has symbolic form for all x, for all y, for all z, q of x, y, z. Or alternatively, if we substitute the propositional function in the quantified statement, we have for all x, for all y, for all z, x plus y quantity plus z is equal to x plus the quantity y plus z. And for our third example, we have the statement, there exist odd prime numbers m and n such that m plus n is equal to 100. This is a particular case of what is called Goldbach's conjecture. In 1742, the Prussian mathematician Christian Goldbach conjectured that every even integer greater than or equal to 6 can be written as the sum of two odd primes. While mathematicians believe this is true and have verified that it's true for all even integers up to 4 times 10 to the 18th, which is 4 quintillion, the result has still not been proved to hold for all even integers greater than or equal to 6. It is therefore only referred to as a conjecture rather than a theorem. The result is clearly true for 100. For instance, 47 and 53 are both primes, and 47 plus 53 is equal to 100. So to write this in symbolic form, define the propositional function r of m n to be m plus n is equal to 100, where the domain for both m and n is a set of odd prime numbers. The statement then has symbolic form, there exists an m, there exists an n, such that r of m n, or alternatively, there exists an m, there exists an n, such that m plus n is equal to 100. Next, we want to talk about mixed quantifiers. When a quantified statement involves both existential and universal quantifiers, or mixed quantifiers, then the order of the quantifiers does matter for both the meaning of the statement and its truth value. For instance, 
Suppose p of x, y is a propositional function involving the variables x and y. Then the statement, for all x there exists a y such that p of x, y, is read as shown. The statement, there exists a y such that for all x, p of x, y, is read as shown. In general, these two statements are not logically equivalent. For our next example, then, we want to rewrite the following statements in symbolic form. And these will involve some mixed quantifiers. Our first statement is, for each non-zero real number x, there exists a real number y such that x times y is equal to 1. This is a statement of the existence of multiplicative inverses for non-zero real numbers. So given a non-zero real number x, we can find a multiplicative inverse y for it. So to write it in symbolic form to find the propositional function, p of x, y will be x times y equals 1. The domain for x is the set of non-zero real numbers, and the domain for y is the set R of real numbers. The statement then has symbolic form for all x there exists a y, p of x, y, or alternatively for all x there exists a y such that x times y equals 1. For our next example, we have the statement, for each real number x, there exists a natural number n, such that n is greater than x. This is called the Archimedean property of the real numbers, and this will come up in advanced calculus. So to find the propositional fun function s of xn is n is greater than x. The domain for x is the set R of real numbers, while the domain for n is the set n of natural numbers, or positive integers. The statement then has symbolic form for all x there exists an n such that s of xn, or alternatively, for all x there exists an n such that n is greater than x. Now many definitions in mathematics involve multiple variables with multiple quantifiers. Understanding a definition often requires analyzing its logical structure, so involves translating the definition to symbolic form. So we have a couple examples asking us to do that. So we want to translate the condition in each definition, the statement following the phrase provided that, to symbolic form. Our first definition is the function f from x to y is 1 to 1, provided that for all x1 and x2 in the domain x of f, if x1 is not equal to x2, then f of x1 is not equal to f of x2. First to find the propositional functions, p of x1, x2 will be x1 is not equal to x2, and q of x1, x2 will be f of x1 is not equal to f of x2. The domain for x1 and x2 is the set x, which is the domain of the function f. Then the function f from x to y is 1 to 1, provided that for all x1, for all x2, p of x1, x2 implies q of x1, x2. Alternatively, we can write this condition with the domain for x1 and x2 indicated and the propositional functions in the statement as for all x1 and x, for all x2 and x, x1 is not equal to x2 implies f of x1 is not equal to f of x2. For our second definition, we have the infinite sequence a sub n, which is a1, a2, a3, and so on, has limit l as n goes to infinity, which is denoted by our usual notation, the limit as n tends to infinity of a sub n is equal to l, provided that for any positive number epsilon, there exists a natural number capital N, such that for all natural numbers little n, if little n is greater than capital N, then the absolute value of a sub n minus l is less than epsilon. Well, this is obviously a very complicated definition, but it's also one of the important definitions in both calculus and in advanced calculus. To write this in symbolic form, we'll start by defining the propositional functions. P of little n, n will be the inequality n is greater than capital N. And Q of n epsilon will be the absolute value of a sub n minus L is less than epsilon. 
the domain of epsilon is the set of positive real numbers, while the domain of both capital N and little n is the set n of natural numbers, then the limit as n tends to infinity of a sub n is equal to L, provided that for all epsilon there exists a capital N such that for all little n, P of n n implies Q of n epsilon. Well, let's see how we obtain this symbolic form. So let's go through it step by step. So to obtain this symbolic form, we just write down the quantifiers in the order in which they appear in the English sentence. Then limit as n tends to infinity of a sub n is equal to L, provided that for all epsilon, there exists a natural number capital N such that for all natural numbers little n, and now we're up to the propositional function, so we have if p of n n, then q of n epsilon. So even though the definition is very complicated, obtaining the symbolic form is relatively straightforward. Now, if, as is commonly done, we just include the propositional functions in the statement and include the domains of each of the variables, epsilon, capital N, and little n, we can write this condition in the form for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N in n, such that for all little n in n, little n is greater than capital N, implies the absolute value of a sub n minus L is less than epsilon. Here's one more example involving mixed quantifiers to illustrate how changing the order of the quantifiers can change the meaning of the statement. We again want to rewrite the statement in symbolic form, and our first statement is, everybody loves somebody. To write this in symbolic form, we need to first rewrite this statement using variables x and y, each representing a person. Define the propositional function p of xy to be x loves y. The domain for both x and y can be the set of all people in the world. The statement can then be rewritten in the form, for every person x, there exists a person y such that x loves y. The statement then has symbolic form, for all x, there exists a y such that p of xy or for all x there exists a y such that x loves y. And there's the symbolic form for our statement. For our second statement, we'll look at somebody is loved by everybody. Now this is a different statement than is in the notes. So this statement can be rewritten using variables as there exists a person y such that for every person x, x loves y. So in the first statement, everybody loves somebody, we're starting with everybody, so that was started with a universal statement. In this statement, we have somebody first, and so we're starting with an existential. There exists a person y. The statement then has symbolic form there exists a y such that for all x, p of x, y, or there exists a y such that for all x, x loves y. Now the two statements in this example, for all x, there exists a y, p of x, y, and there exists a y such that for all x, p of x, y, differ only in the order of their quantifiers. However, it's very clear that the meanings of the two statements are different. This is again a reminder that for a statement with mixed quantifiers, the order in which the quantifiers appear is important to keep straight. Changing the order will in general change the meaning of the statement and will often change the truth value.